Yoo-hoo! Yeah, you know who it is. Yup, Odark 30, 830. Little, little late right now, because I already got the workout in, and it's time for the Impact Show. And today, you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat because this is a 19-year-old man who reached out to me via email and had some great, great questions. And I said, hey, Carter Pline, would you mind if we go on Zoom and get a little podcast recording for the Impact Show? Because we got to fire up some fire-breathing dragons. Folks, you're going to really enjoy this conversation today with this young man, 19 years old. He's a college student, and he had some really deep questions that I think are tremendously valuable for anyone, regardless of age. And uh, as a reminder, I love when you reach out, when you ask questions or you comment on the Impact Show, or if I see that you're sharing the Impact Show on your social media or to your family, I so appreciate it. Let's keep the conversations going. And without further ado, let's go to the Impact Show with my man, Carter Klein. So what does a day in your life look like? Man. Depends what day it is. <laughs> um, if, if it's a weekday, typically, um, you know, if it's it's somewhere, my my holy hours between five and six a.m. where I'm getting more quiet time, kind of getting up, getting the juices flowing, getting ready for my early morning workout. I love fast cardio workouts. So first thing when I get moving, I get the pup out for a walk, kind of let the let the crisp air uh, feel the you know feel it on the face a little bit, and then and get in my home gym here and uh, start to start to pump away. Um, so between my, my walk in faith and my journaling and my workout time, that's like the first hour of every day. And that's a really important time for me because it kind of sets the tone. Then depending on the day, my Tuesdays and Thursdays are more, I, I say more creative days. I'm doing my podcasting. I'm, I'm coaching in my mastermind group. Uh, and everything before 12 noon is, is content creation, content creation. On Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's when I'm, I'm primarily training my athletes and clients. Um, so from eight till you know noon or so is all all uh, training sessions. And the afternoons is more of um, I'll say reactive emails, um, getting back to people, phone calls, phone meetings, um, consultation stuff like that is more in the afternoon. So I like to do my best work before noon. Yeah. Now you, you mentioned that mastermind group coaching with that. Can you, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So 2007, I, I, I uh, read this book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and not necessarily rich in money, but just rich in life. Like mm -hmm. how do you just get fulfillment? And I talked about the power of a mastermind group, a collective, a group of individuals with like-minded purpose who are going to feed each other and lift each other up. I got an aha moment uh, while reading that, that I was going to create my mastermind group for fitness professionals and trainers started it in October, 2007. And uh, ever since that time, I've absolutely loved coaching and mentoring other fit pros. And through that, I mean, we've grown exponentially. We started with 12 people, I call them the dirty dozen or the Knights of the round mm -hmm. table. And um, now we've got, you know, a couple hundred of the most passionate fit pros on the planet, literally changing lives. Um, some are studio owners, some are more influencers in the online world, but all of them have the, the collective um, purpose of changing lives and creating impact. And um, I spend a, a fair amount of time now um, with my mastermind, um, not only in my live retreats, and we're getting back to live retreats next month, but also in my monthly coaching calls, um, emails, if they've got questions on business or leadership or marketing or branding or, or training in the trenches talk, if they've got a client situation, um, there's nothing worse than, than being uh, feeling like you're on an island all by yourself. And the right. purpose of the mastermind is now you've got other people, including myself and the coaches that I have inside the mastermind to really be a go-to resource and the last thing about that I'd say is I'm a huge personal growth junkie. I love mm -hmm. personal growth. I believe that we can only go as far as we grow. And the mastermind, um, it, number one, it keeps me hungry to keep growing because I know I'm growing people. Um, and part of my legacy is going to be uh, on impacting thousands or millions of people in my lifetime. And I know that that's the most intimate group that I work with. I share everything, my, my, you know, things that are going well, things that aren't going well, my current struggles and challenges and obstacles and issues. And 
a lot of times people learn from that because they see the outside like, oh, everything is perfect. Yeah, they see your Instagram feed or they see your social media. But in the mastermind, I'm really, I'm really sharing strategy of what I'm doing so that I can reach more people as well. So the personal growth aspect, I don't care who you are, what, what occupation, industry, sector that you're in, I believe that personal growth is a huge part of success in any area of, uh, of a career. Yeah, it kind of comes down to uh, that individual success is uh, through collective accountability yep, uh, with that group. Absolutely. Um, so what are you consistently doing every day to develop yourself and become better as a whole? Working out. <laughs> Man, it's my, it's my saving grace working out. Uh, listen, I, I'm not like, hey, you know, I have a four-day split routine and it's lower body two times a week and upper body twice a week. I'm moving every day of the week. And when I say moving, I'm not always killing myself. I always say stimulate, don't annihilate. <laughs> it, yeah. uh, it's getting out and moving, getting the blood flowing. Um, some days it's more aerobic type work, you know, brisk walk, slow jog uh, every now and then, hit a little, hit a little get after it, um, some striders. But every day it's something. And some days it's more like gentle, more breath work and meditation. But for me, the nurturing of the body and the mind is essential. Um, so I'd say every day that's something that I do. And um, I say also just like the last several years, um, just going deeper in my faith walk every day. Um, it's not always a formal process, although the morning time is when I like to spend it before the sun comes up. But like sometimes it's like while driving in a car, I'll turn the radio off and just kind of like pray to God. And and that faith walk for me is something every day um, is that I, I do spend time on. And some days it's a few minutes and sometimes it's it's an hour. But I think another best practice is just that. For sure. I mean, you kind of, you touch on spiritual wellness, physical, and then the physical working out uh, leads to emotional wellness and kind of yeah. all it's that triangle. Absolutely. Um, what is the best piece of practical advice you have ever been given that has really stuck with you? Probably not to take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I take myself too serious, right? <laughs> I think yeah. we all do it to a certain extent. And whenever I remind myself is stop taking yourself too serious, uh, play more, loosen up, relax, enjoy. Um, I think, you know, that, that, that common fold is sometimes we put so much pressure on ourselves that we have to be perfect and that's, and perfection is unattainable. So I think it's great to strive for excellence. I think it's great to, to strive for being your absolute best, realizing that that is going to come with some flaws and some failures and some mistakes. And that's okay. Um, so I think that's some of the best advice I've ever received is, is a loosen up, play, relax. Don't, don't take yourself so serious that everything has to be perfect because I think perfectionism actually robs you of actually taking action on things that you probably want to do or need to do. But the fear of failing because you're not going to be perfect holds you back. And whether that's as an, as an entrepreneur, as a leader, as an athlete, it's that, it's that mindset of not trying to be perfect. Hey, I coach here at the local high school. It drives me nuts when I hear other you know, coaches uh, get on kids for, for making mistakes. Now, I understand that kids are going to make mistakes. Depends on the preparation. But like, I'm always like, go full speed all out. And if you make a mistake, that's okay. Learn from it. I'd rather people go 100% all out making mistakes than playing tentative, trying to be perfect, because that's a surefire way you're going to get beat. In sport or in, in business or in life, you got to play all out and you can't be afraid to take chances. You can't be afraid uh, to take a, a stab going deep into the football every now and then. Um, mm -hmm. So to me, it's, it's, it's loosen up, play, relax, have some fun, and uh, remember why we're here. Yeah, I know our coach, he's always preaching to us, you know, we have a no fear, no embarrassment mentality. Hmm. Uh, you're going to go through it and, you know, you're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. But as long as you're going hard, you're giving everything you have. That's what matters. What sport do you play, Carter? I play basketball. Basketball. All right. What position yeah. are you? What position? I've I played every position this year, if I'm being honest. I'm, I'm what you'd call a utility guy. Hey, that's extremely valuable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, 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 now that's a that's a formula for success to make the team right there. Is I can do anything, coach. I'm <laughs> yeah. willing to step in. That's yeah. fantastic. Good for mm -hmm. you. Okay. Uh, so then, if you could give a piece of advice to me and my generation, what would that be? Work. 
work your butt off. And when you think you're working hard, there's another level. Um, and I, I wouldn't just say just for your generation, because people are always like, you know, um, they, they don't know how to work. I, I Let me tell you what, there's a lot of teens and, and folks in their 20s who I, I know do work really, really hard. But I think um, the concept of instant gratification is a very dangerous thing because sometimes people think because they work for a long weekend or for one season, they deserve success. Um, I was just talking recently to Mike Chandler. Mike is a fighter in the UFC and Mike said it only took me 20 years to be an overnight success. Um, I think that's very apropos. Um, I think about sometimes even my journey. Um, I think about early on that I spent my entire twenties learning. I didn't make money, very much money at all in my twenties. I was in school. I was learning from mentors and gurus in the healing world and training. And I was, I was really just getting as much knowledge as possible. So if there's one piece of wisdom I'd say is when you go for a job interview and you're, and, and, and you truly are wanting a job, be willing to be the grunt in the workforce. Be willing to be the one that's sweeping the floors, cleaning toilets, learning for very little money. Like it's okay if you're not making money when you're in your twenties while everyone else is flashing Instagram uh, things of, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're making money and they're driving fancy cars and flying in jets. It's a bunch of BS is mm -hmm. what you got to do is you got to be willing to, to work and to have grit and grind uh, on that stuff and, and literally make very little money for that it's all about the accumulation of knowledge and wisdom and, and mentors that can help really catapult you up when you have that knowledge in you. Um, so I think that's an important thing. And, and one more piece I'd say probably is, you know, we talk about uh, the social media game um, and whether it be on TikTok, uh, Snapchat, Instagram, I think it's very dangerous. Sometimes social media is uh, we've got this feeling that we're never good enough because you're comparing yourself uh, you know, you're, you're comparing your insides to everyone else's outside. And when you look at everyone else's outside, it's always blemish free. It's beautiful. And it's, it's, man, look what she has. Look what he has. Look what the money and look at the, you know, the fame and the fortune, whatever it is. And inside, there's a lot of empty souls. And I'd say is not to compare yourself uh, to someone else's Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever it may be. Uh, if you're going to use social media, social media is an opportunity to potentially leverage your skill sets and what are you putting out into the world? Just be careful what comes in. That's why it's called your feed, your feed, mm -hmm. what's in your feed. It's feeding you good or bad. So your feed is what you're looking at every day. And that's affecting your mindset. That's affecting the way you think, the quality of your thoughts. And it could be toxicity, could be toxic thoughts, or it could be good things. So you may have to edit even your accounts and see that because, and it's not just for, for you know, your generation. It really is for anybody because right. you can be talking to a 40, 50, 60 year old man or woman. It's no different. They're like, man, I should be more successful at this point in my life. And you're just feeding yourself something that's a lie. Like, listen, where you are at today is perfect. Let's, let's think about what your dream is, what your vision is, what your mission is. And let's set a game plan to get there in six months, 12 months, three years, five years, 10 years. Where do you want to be? And set that game plan. Mm -hmm. It comes back to that comparison is the thief of joy. My, my dad told me that and it, it stuck with me ever since. You're absolutely right. And, you, and I think it's human nature to constantly look. I mean, you could be an athlete and you're like, man, I wish I had, you know, his talent. I wish I was six foot four um, or I wish I, I ran a four five forty. And, and meanwhile, you've got your own set of gifts that make you special and unique. And I'd say is capitalize on the gifts that you have uh, capitalize on your strengths. And yeah, of course that's going to be natural again, but not to, not to live in a space where you're constantly wishing you had other people's gifts and skill sets and not your own, but yeah, good right. advice from your father. Yeah. Um, so I know you mentioned, uh, your faith earlier, but is mm -hmm. that, is that one thing that really grounds you and helps keep things in perspective for you? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I was, I was born and raised in faith. I was born, uh, uh, Catholic. I'm the youngest of eight kids. And I always went to church all the way through high school and then through college. And it really was at college though, where I developed my faith walk. I mean, like truly not just going to church, which is religion, but developing a relationship with God and Jesus and strengthening my faith. I mean, that was really 
strengthened through a massive setback when I was in college. Carter, how old are you? I am 19 years old. You're 19. So when I was 20, uh, just a year older than you, um, my best friend, my cheerleader, my mentor, my father passed away of a heart attack. Now, I don't know how close you are with your father, but for me, my father was the one guy that I was the apple of his eye. Like I could call my dad and he would pump me up and, and that stuff. And he was just 58 and he had a massive heart attack, passed away. And let me tell you what, if you have ever had anyone close to you in your life that has passed or you you're down, you're, you're, you're in a depression. Um, you often, if you're of faith, you question your faith. And I question my faith big time then, like, like I never in my life questioned my faith before. And, um, you know, why God me, why God would you take my father from our family in this earth? He's a good man. And all of these questions that I asked myself over a period of weeks and months to the point where I considered quitting college. I literally, when I was in, in Virginia, considered getting in my beat up old 78 Chevrolet Caprice classic and filling up with gas and driving across the country just to get lost. That's where I was at. And I remember I was competing for a football quarterback starting job. And I remember having tears under my helmet during practice. I'm thinking, why am I doing this? How can I compete? I can't even get my father off my mind. Well, it was through that period of time in my life where I really went deeper on my own faith. And it actually strengthened my faith, reminding myself and those around me and, and the priest and the, and the, and the uh, spiritual mentors in my life at the time reminding me that this time on earth is short lived and there's no time that's guaranteed. And I learned a valuable lesson at age 20 that I, I, to this day, don't take for granted that time is the most precious asset that we have. And we only have so much time and it's finite. And whether it be 20 years, 58 years, uh, 75 years is uh, it's, it's all about that time that we have. So for me, um, that was something that was very, very impactful um, for me, and you know, in a, in a roundabout way to come all the way full circle, because you asked about faith. Mm -hmm. I realize now through seeing a lot of things in life, I've seen my best friend die, I've seen my father pass away, I've seen people close in my life battling sickness and disease and many different things. As I realize this, it really is about your faith walk, and that is a grounding thing. It's it it gives me hope knowing that there is an eternal heaven that someday I'll spend time in. Um, so for me, regardless of the success or the failures here uh, on earth, I believe that uh, if you're driven by purpose and you align your, your decisions with God, then ultimately you have a, a life that is guaranteed beyond your time on earth. Right. I, uh, I also grew up in a Catholic household and obviously I attend a Christian school and uh, earlier this year, there was there was a prayer I read, one of these devotionals I was doing that said, uh, search my heart, break my heart, and then send me on my way, uh, mm. Lord. And I think uh, that kind of describes, you know, what you went through, you know, God searched you uh, for, you know, what was on your heart, what you needed, then he broke you down, and then he sent you and brought, uh, helped grow you back up. Yeah. And here's the thing, Carter, no one wants to be broken. Right. None of us like to be broken. We, we don't, no one wants to be broken. You know, I think about that, that, that poem from Footprints, right? Like, God, why did you desert me when I need you the most? And he's like, I didn't. I was carrying you. Those are my footprints. Uh, no one likes to be broken. Um, but when you are broken, and there are many people who are broken, when you are broken, you need a rock to stand on. You need something mm -hmm. to give you hope. You need something to give you strength or energy. And frankly, the flesh is weak. Like you're like, oh, TD, you fire me up all the time. Fantastic. But guess what? You're going to need a lot more than me uh, to get you through your, your deepest trials and tribulations. And I'm glad that there's a lot of people that may think that or watch that and get that juice that we talk about. But to me, there's something that's way more sustainable than human spirit and energy. And that's faith in God. And um, when you talk about being broken, I'm always talking about being, you know, from broken, from broken to blessed is the only way to go from broken to blessed is to, to go deeper in faith. And that's hard to do. It's really hard because none of us, including me, like to be broken. But when I look back, when I look back, why is it always 
when you look back about your biggest growth times, it was when you were broken. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it was, it was the death of my father. Five years later, I blew out my back when I was 25 playing pro football. My back gets broken. That led me down a, a path to heal my own pain, open my own gym, and for the last 21 years, changed people's lives in my sanctuary at Fitness Quest 10. Uh, I look back and all of the setbacks and adversities, things that people don't see, that put a, a, a fire in me to write books or create the podcast or you know, do the things I do now. Typically, it comes from when you're being broken. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, uh, grapes are pressed for wine. Coal is crushed for diamonds. You know, you, I'm sure you've heard all of those before. Look at you at 19 years old, spitting <laughs> out poems, baby. Why be on your ears, Carter? I, I do my best to learn from the best. That's good. That's good. Uh, so what do you want people to say at your funeral? You know, what, what is the legacy you're really hoping to leave? Man, we talking deep, huh? We talking deep. Impact Man, guy, Todd Durkin, and I want the freaking between my name, Todd freaking Durkin, Impact Man, <laughs> changed my life. He's the most positive person I've ever met, um, and he instilled a, a, a dream in me um, that, uh, that, that uh, changed my life. For me, it's all about being a great father, being a great husband, being a great coach, and transforming lives. That's what I do, yeah. um, and um, you know, really, really special. Yeah. And, you know, so what, what is next for you? I mean, obviously you've accomplished a lot. You've been incredibly successful. Uh, what's something you're really directing your attention towards uh, as you go through these next portions of your life? Well, I think the big thing is one thing that COVID taught us all is to stay in the now, right? To stay in the here and the now. And I do have big dreams and visions for the next decade. I just turned 50. Um, and one of the things that I think is important to realize is that um, the next decade for me is going to be about really my best work and, and putting my signature down on impacting people. Because my mission and my purpose is to impact 10 million people in my lifetime. Well, I'm not going to wait. Uh, I want to make sure that that happens in the next few years. So I want to stay uber focused on the now of being a great dad. I'm coaching my kids in, in football, um, and I go to my daughter's soccer games, which I absolutely love. She's 13 and loves seeing her run, and I, it brings me so much joy. So regardless of the accolades that I may have in my career, it really is as a parent, as a father, um, is that something I'm going to really continue to spend time in as a husband of uh, my wife that we just celebrated uh, 20 years is making sure that that commitment um, to my family and to her is paramount because I want to be one of those guys that celebrates 50 years of marriage. Um, I think that is the most, mo most remarkable thing when I see a couple that does yeah. that. And then just from a career wise is to continue doing what I love doing on what God has anointed me to do. And that's putting my word out there to be an eternal optimist, positive motivator, someone who inspires people to be their best and whether it be that through podcasting um, writing more books, um, um, live events. I cannot wait to get back to uh, doing more live events, coaching in the mastermind group again. Um, these are the things that I'm, work, I'm walking congruent with my purpose when I'm doing, doing that type of work. Yeah. So those were, you know, really most of the questions I had, you know, I think I got you for about three, four more minutes. So I'd love to pick your brain with a little lightning round of Ooh, questions. Lightning up. round. Yeah, the first thing that comes to your head, I got three questions here. All right, lightning round, let's go. All right, if you owned a billboard, what is one quote you would put on it? Get your mind right. <laughs> It'd be get your mind right. Get your mind right. That's what it would be. And I'd be like pointing, my, pointing the finger to the head. No doubt about it. That was simple. Uh, if you could sit down for dinner with anyone from any time period, where would you eat and who would it be with? My father... Peter Luger Steakhouse in, in New York. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is the coolest gift you've ever gotten? Ooh, just got it yesterday. Just check this out. One of my clients is an athlete named Tim Lucas. And Tim is an awesome young man. He is, he's an aspiring motivational uh, speaker after his football career is on. He, I, I, he literally just gave me this yesterday. It's a hammer. 
It's a hammer. And on the hammer, he had engraved, TD, thank you for helping me build my life. With That's hammer. awesome. Because he's a hard worker and he listens to everything. And he's training with the pro athletes. And he's, he's, uh, he's at that level. He's playing CFL, getting some NFL tryouts. And, and uh, I literally got this yesterday uh, for, for the birthday, uh, birthday gift. And absolutely means the world to me because that's impact when someone like, you know, Tim or anybody gives you a gift to like help. Thank you for helping me build my life. Tim Lucas. Next. That's awesome. Uh, lastly, what is the first word that pops into your head when I say 2021? Best is yet to come. Uh, 2021 impact. I guess if you want one word, it's impact impact yeah 2021 best is yet to come um you know carter as as i mentioned earlier on i live by impact uh impact to that ad acronym and if you're a first time listener impact is live inspired master your craft play at world class take action condition for greatness and be tenacious there's one word 2021 coming off the heels now uh just a bit over a year since the pandemic started and, and going in there's a little flicker of light and god it feels good to have some hope about we're getting through this we're getting to the other side of this um and as the world starts to open on up man it is a great great feeling knowing that uh you know we can all get back to doing what we do best whatever that may be and for me it's impact and whether it's a podcast whether it's uh, an event again, whether it's uh, a conversation at the gym with a packed class of people, man, that's what fires me up these days. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, continue listening to your podcast, maybe hopefully listening to you in person and, you know, reading your books. So uh, Carter, thank man, you. You, you're awesome. Hey, wh where, what's your social media? Where can someone follow you at? Uh, I'm you on, have any of that? I, I, check it on my computer. I don't keep it on my phone. Cause you know, we talked about it. I, I hate following along, seeing the highlight reel of people's lives. Mm. Um, uh, Instagram is CJ then PPP two. And then Twitter is just Carter JP 32. Mm. Uh, there you'll, you'll see me, you know, retweet a bunch of, you know, authors that I read, uh, your stuff, John Gordon's, uh, just positive stuff, hoping to spread a good message. Well, and what's the name of the university you're at? Uh, Mount Vernon Nazarene University. It's in Ohio. What are you studying? I am studying sports psychology. Sports psychology. Do you have any idea yet what you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> uh, not, not sure yet, but, you know, after today's podcast, something, something in your area. Yeah, good. Well, I didn't know either at age 20 what, or 19 what, what I want to do. And I think there's so many opportunities, but the most important thing is – you know, don't don't follow your career path based on money. Always talk about, you know, impact over income, impact mm -hmm. over income. And um, when you think about what you love to do, what you're most passionate about, what you want to do is be in a field in a career where you're passionate about something that you love to do, because that will provide and create opportunities for you in regards of what that is. So um, best of luck to you and keep me posted on your progress. I, I'd love to uh, stay in touch with everything you're doing. Yeah, thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you for, you know, taking the time today. I know you're really busy, but you know, I really appreciate it. Thanks, Carter. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Carter Pline today. You know how that all came about? It was because that young man reached out to me. He reached out to me via an email and, and said that he had a few questions he'd like to ask. And when I got back to him, I said, absolutely would love to, if, if you don't mind if I record that for the podcast. And um, I was so impressed with his maturity and the questions he asked that I'm sharing it with you today. And he was, uh, he loved the fact that he could do that. So um, do me a favor. If you've got questions like that, and whether you're a, whether you're a 19 year old student or you're a 59 year old student, uh, feel free to continue to pump those questions to me. Cause I love to, to highlight and feature people that have questions or wisdom or insight that uh, we could have a conversation and share with the world because I believe that conversation right there was uh, certainly one that was valuable. And if so, please share it. Share it. One of the best things you can do to help spread the word of the Impact Show is to share it within your community. And whether that be an email or on your social media or uh, just texting a link to your friends. 
do me a favor. Please share the Impact Show, and it will uh, help us in our mission to change the world. Have an awesome day, and until next time, remember, train hard, eat right, live inspired, and go create impact.